welcome once again to Rouge Radio. I'm Reed Duffy, and I'm very pleased to be joined by Rick Stovieta, and we're covering something today that we haven't covered before, really, and that is the men's senior team for Canadian football and the world championship. And, Rick, we brought you on, and it's really a two-fold purpose. We want to get information about that tournament out and see if we can't help you with a little bit of fundraising. But first off, for our listeners that might not be familiar with the Canadian national team or the world championship, what, what exactly is it, and uh, how is this comparable to what they've seen in terms of the CFL and the CIS? Well, the, uh, the World Championship, this is the fourth one they're, they're having, and they have it every four years. And the, uh, the first two were won by um, uh, Japan, and then the third one was the, uh, the first time the Americans entered the World Championship, and, and they won it, but they had to go to uh, double overtime to, to beat the uh, Japanese. So this is our first venture into it, and uh, you know our players are 20 and, and, and up, and basically current and ex-CIS players and ex-CFL players and senior players, and uh, it's another opportunity for for uh, you know players to to play besides uh, you know the CFL or the NFL. And uh, as news is just broken, we got the, we saw the press release. Adrian Obelli and Shurko Hachirazuli have joined the team as well. I mean, that's got to be a big shot in the arm for the national program. Oh, absolutely. And uh, I tell you what, they've been great. Uh, you know, there's uh, a load of experience there. And certainly, uh, you know, the uh, media exposure doesn't hurt at all either. And, and you know, they've, uh, they've been leaders here as far as, you know, helping out some of the younger guys. And we're really glad to have them here. Yeah, it's got to be a big step forward to be able to have those type of leaders on the team. And it looks like that the Canadian national team is really building uh, from the ground up. They're, they're going grassroots, very strong organization, and bringing in some players that really help out with that. However, there is a bit of a funding gap at the moment, and uh, I believe it's $80,000 you guys are looking for, or has that number come down? No, it's about 80000 and um, it's and um, it's been a struggle, and it's really because of uh, awareness. Um, and, you know, when you talk to people uh, within the football circles, you know, a lot of them haven't to realize that there is an international game out there that's uh, pretty vibrant. And because we're not funded through, uh, through the uh, federal government, because we're not an Olympic sport, we're, we struggle to, to raise money. And, uh, you know, certainly that's been probably our biggest uh, obstacle. Now, uh, one of the uh, one of the big stumbling points that we've gotten so far on this at Rouge Radio, some of the uh, feedback from uh, people about the World Championship, is they're wondering why Canadians are participating in an American Rules tournament and whether they could spend the money better going to this tournament or going into uh, putting in money into uh, training programs for kids, reducing costs for parents. I, it seems like one could go hand in hand with the other, but I wanted to give you a chance to respond to those. Well, I think that, you know, participating internationally, first of all, internationally, uh, just builds that awareness and, and provides more opportunities. You know, the fact that you're playing, um, you know, American rules is uh, is the nature of, you know, the, the game expanding outside of the, uh, the U.S. borders and, you know, in NFL Europe and, and uh, in Japan also. So it's kind of a natural for them to adopt that. Saying that, though, I mean, We've got we 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 do have a better game, and um, you know the fact that uh, we can play our game and also play their game. I mean that just makes it uh, that much uh, sweeter. You know, it just shows you that we can do this. And when it comes down to it, you know, you're a football player, and and though the rules may uh, be somewhat significant, uh, you know, Canadians can play, and we've got to show people around the world that we can play. Yeah, Canadians definitely uh, strong in in football with the CFL. Of course, the CIS getting better year after year. The uh, effect on the players that uh, come to this tournament going from the Canadian rules to the American rules. Well, you know, I, and I've played both. And, uh, I mean, there certainly are some uh, some differences that you, you really need to be uh, cognitive of. And um, uh, But you, you adjust, you know. I mean, it's still hustling and getting to the ball and throwing the ball and catching the ball. Uh, you adjust to it, and, uh, and, you know, our coaches are well prepared for it, uh, you know, and the size of the field and so forth. So it is an adjustment, but um, not that big enough that we can't do it. I just want to stress, though, you know, you compare the games, and, and I know that there's a lot of people that love the American game, but 
you know, I truly believe that our game is, is quite unique and, uh, and wide open, and it's just better, all around better. I, I completely agree with you, and uh, at Rouge Radio, that's pretty much our, our motto up here, you know, faster game, more, more excitement uh, during the game. The Canadian rules definitely bring something that you don't get anywhere else. And speaking of uh, going on that theme with the Canadians, we definitely want to give you a chance to, to bring up awareness right now and, and really uh, make a pitch for fundraising. So I want to uh, turn the floor to you, essentially, and, and give you a chance to really make a, a pitch towards anyone listening out there that might be able to help you and, and give you a shot to really uh, get this program to where it needs to be. Well, we'd appreciate any kind of uh, funding that anybody can uh, afford, uh, any denomination. I mean, we've got a long way to go yet, but um, they, they can contact me directly uh, by email, uh, gridiron at footballcanada.com, or they can go to our website, uh, footballcanada.com, and there's a process there to uh, to donate. But, you know, again, I have to stress to you that, you know, we're, we're fighting against the uh, you know, awareness, and also that uh, we don't get the same support that, say, you know, basketball, rugby, or ho- hockey get, and yet it is one of our heritage sports. Yeah, we really need to, to boost the awareness of football in Canada, especially, and get it onto that same plane as hockey. There's no reason we can't have two full national sports in this country, especially when one is designed to be played in winter and one is designed to be played in, in uh, spring and summer It uh, and the fall, of course. It just makes it uh, a much better country overall and for uh, young kids to get into sports but uh, Rick as, as we close out the interview a little bit I want to uh, also ask you what the future holds for the Canadian men's team obviously you guys have created an incredible roster for as you said your first World Cup and this should give you guys a great chance to compete but even beyond this where do you see this program going um, I guess it depends on, on how things kind of shake out, especially on the funding. Obviously, uh, you, you need the money to, to be able to participate internationally. But uh, the next senior world championship will be in uh, in four more years, in 2015. Uh, but next year, we're going to start preparing, uh, you know, as soon as we kind of kind of hang up our hats on this one, is uh, there's a junior world championship uh, that will be played in the States. Uh, and that's a U20. You know, we've participated in that uh, two years ago in Canton, Ohio, and won silver. We lost to the Americans. Uh, so we'll we'll start preparing for that. And then in 2013, there'll be the Women's uh, World Tackle Championship, uh, and we par- we have participated in that uh, last year, and we won silver. And again, we lost to the Americans. So it is a uh, it'll be an ongoing thing, and and uh, we we want to you know build the program so that uh, it's self sufficient from year to year, and that we keep participating, and we actually have a pathway from you know the grassroots to to this international play, but it's an alternative than uh, to the pros. Yeah, and uh, Rick, we also want to thank you very much for your time here today, and. We hope we can do anything, and and we really hope this interview helps to get awareness of the program and of the tournament out, and and hopefully you guys get that money uh, raised very quickly and you can take this uh, team that's been built and looks very impressive to the World Championship. Best of luck in the World Championship, getting the funding and beyond into the the junior tournaments and the women's tournaments. It's going to be fun to see the development of football in Canada. Well, thanks very much. We certainly appreciate the help. Anything we can do to help, Rick, uh, just uh, don't be a stranger to us. Thank you very much for coming on. Our thanks Thank to you. Rick Solvieta for coming on and talking about uh, the Canadian national men's team and the future of the gridiron in Canada. And we want to thank him once again for being here. And thank you for listening to Rouge Radio and supporting Canadian football. I'm Reed Duffy.